One of the most common questions I've gotten since starting the channel is what camera is the best camera to use when it comes to pitch design? And while that answer is going to depend on a few things, my goal in this video is to help steer you all in the right direction when making this very important decision. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. So before we dive into all of the different cameras I've heard of, let's reflect on why you need a camera for pitch design. The largest factor in play for generating different movement profiles on your pitches is going to be your hand and wrist orientation at release. This is something that is nearly impossible to see with just your naked eye. So investing in a high speed camera to help analyze what is exactly happening at release can play a major role in an efficient pitch design session. Pairing the video with the numbers spit out from your Rapsodo, Trackman, or Diamond Kinetics device, there is truly no better pair for making a positive change in a pitcher's arsenal in the bullpen. Now if you're a reader of the blog, this part may be a bit of a reflection of last week's post, as I'll be covering the main cameras covered in that post. But if you get done with this video and you're still looking to do some more research on a specific camera, take a look in the description below for the link to my most recent blog post on the same subject. To begin with, I've broken up these cameras into three categories. The high-end cameras, the mid-range cameras, and the affordable cameras. This is mostly broken down by comparable price, but each camera's capabilities also come in their ranking on my board. Let's start with the top, with the high-end option, the Edutronic camera. This camera is the little blue box that you've seen on Twitter. It's one of the most common selections for universities and professional organizations out there, and for a good reason. The Edutronic camera was created in an attempt to make a super high quality, high speed camera more affordable than they've ever been before. Your typical high speed camera before this one came in with a price tag in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and this one is under 10% of that cost. If you're a fan of this channel, you've seen the Edger displayed as a GoPro looking camera in most of my videos, but here's what it actually looks like in action. You can see the blue box with a few cords coming out the back right there. And if you look closely, you can get a sneak peek of what the web portal looks like that you can pair to any mobile device. If you're looking to buy a new Edgertronic, the base model is going to run you about 6,500 US dollars. And you can run that up all the way to $15,000. But for the ease of use and the quality of the camera, you bet it's gonna be worth every penny. Something I'll include on each review of the cameras today is its max FPS, or frames per second. That is how many pictures this camera can take in one second creating a high quality slow motion video upon review. The base model of this camera can max out at a whopping 22,000 frames per second and can sustain HD footage up to nearly 900 frames per second. That's really impressive stuff for a camera of this price. And like I mentioned before, one of the major pros of this camera is that it's fairly intuitive when it comes to actually using it through their dashboard on the web. When it comes to pros and cons, the pros are obvious. This is a top of the line camera capable of taking some insane footage for a fraction of the price of the cameras in the past. It's easy to use web interface makes using this camera a breeze for even people with little to no experience with professional cameras. The major con I have on this is that the price tag isn't going to work for every team out there, especially as you move down to the lower levels of the game. But don't worry, we're only working our way down from here in terms of price. On to the next category, our mid range options, starting with the Rapsodo Insight. I'm going to be upfront with this, I personally have not used this camera myself, so the review I'm going to give you is based off what I've heard from others and what I've seen online doing some research about the device. The first thing to note is if we categorize the Edger in the full money bag price range, you can start off by just cutting that in half. A new Rapsodo Insight is going to cost you about $3,500, so a much more affordable option already in comparison. But what you'll save in price, you'll compromise slightly in capabilities. This camera has the option to shoot at 640 or 850 FPS. So a bit less than what we saw in our Edger, but that definitely is going to be slow enough for what we're looking for. This camera also has even better app integration into the Rapsodo Pitching or Hitting app, allowing seamless video capture automatically recorded as each pitch is thrown. If you don't know much about cameras, or don't care to deal with manually sorting through and storing videos, this camera is going to be the option for you. Its ease of use earns it a gold star in my books. So the pros and cons. The first obvious pro is that it's a much more affordable option than the Edger. And if you can imagine, it's even easier to set up and use with the already straightforward Rapsodo apps. But the price tag is still no joke, and the camera's capabilities don't rival what we saw to the Edger. But as you can tell from this video, you may not need such extreme frame rates for what you're trying to accomplish. The easy integration with the data alongside the review is a major bonus in my book too. 
The other camera in this tier is the Kronos High Speed Camera. As you can tell just by looking at the camera, it's going to be a little bit more hands-on than Rapsodo's Insight. And of course, I do not have hands-on experience with this device either. With that being said, I've only heard good things. The cost for this camera is actually going to be slightly lower than the Insight, and where you're really going to get your bang for your buck with this device is with the specs. This camera has the ability to capture up to 38,000 frames per second. That's nearly double Edger's base model capabilities. This isn't the case all the way through some of their more advanced and expensive models, but it's still pretty impressive. It's able to record full HD videos up to 1000 frames per second in regular HD and up to 1500 frames per second, which would have been enough to toss this camera in the high end bracket, but at this price I've decided to keep it in the mid tier. The important thing to note here is that this is our first camera that doesn't provide you with the easy to use web or app interface. So you will need to learn a little bit about cameras in order to make this camera perform to your liking. But at this price, I think you may be willing to put in some extra time. With that being said, you can tell from footage like this that you're definitely still looking at a very high quality camera. And those are our two cameras in the mid tier, each less expensive than our high end option and on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to ease of use versus camera capabilities. On to our affordable options. So coming into our first spot on the affordable options list, we have the Sony RX10. This camera shoots high quality slow motion footage for a much more affordable cost. Again, I have not personally used this camera. You can refer to at ConHinge on Twitter to find out some more from someone who has tons of hands-on experience with this device. But let's break down what's important. Starting with the price. You can buy the latest model of this camera brand new for about $1,600. Already looking much more affordable than any of the other cameras on this list, right? Well, let's take it a step further because you can buy an older version of this camera or a used version of this camera anywhere from the $500 to $700 range. That's crazy good for a camera like this one. The max frames per second is a lot more limiting maxing out at 1000 frames per second and you may have a slight sacrifice in video quality if you max this puppy out, but it's definitely a quality investment for this amount. I mean seriously, take a look at this footage. The main takeaway with this camera and the other in this tier is that this is a camera that happens to have a high speed setting. So you have to get down to the nitty gritty setting it up for the first time. But because it's used for everyday purposes, you can also find tons of guides showing you how to get this guy set up for what you're looking for pretty easily online. And that leads us to our last camera on the list, another Sony product. This one, the Sony RX100. This is a camera that I have actually invested in and not just for its high speed capabilities. You'll definitely see some more videos on this camera in the future. To purchase the brand new latest model, you'll run your tab up to about $1,200. But with a quick search, I was able to find this camera for sale as cheap as $300. The max FPS is similar to that of the RX10 at 960 FPS, and I have noticed a decrease in quality shooting at that rate. But it's definitely good enough to see what you're looking for, especially for the crazy price point of just a couple hundred dollars. And that's going to cap off my list of the top cameras you can use for pitch design reasons. There is one camera I'm leaving off that nearly everybody has access to, and that's your phone. With the latest iPhone being able to take high speed footage up to 240 frames per second, there's no excuse to not be using this resource to help get your pictures better. Just take a look at what Lennon Richards is doing at his training facility up in Toronto. So what do I think your main takeaways should be from this video? Well first things first, recording high speed footage of your players pitching is good and you should do it. I have a few videos on why on the channel, but I found it to significantly reduce the learning curve when attempting to acquire a new pitch. If any of these cameras spiked your interest and you want to dive deeper, check out my blog post on the subject over on simplesabermetrics.com. As always, links below. The overall goal of this video is to help you figure out what cameras are being used in the game today and hopefully steer you in a direction when it comes to a price point and the camera's capabilities. This was definitely a different kind of video for sure. So if you'd like to see more like it, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.